Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. We're still very close to Aldersburg, but uh, to finish this off, we have a few little settlements left. We have this one over here before we actually reach Aldersburg, and then we have this uh, Waldorf Estate, which we're gonna head towards right now as a first thing of business. Seems to be a barricade in the way. Uh, and there's another... Yeah, let's check out the unicorn first, because this is the unicorn. Let's check that out. A taxidermied unicorn. Strange. What are your orders, Your Grace? Shall we take it? I've no notion what one could possibly do with such a thing. We ride on. Well, you could have sex on it. I did explain that in one of the previous episodes, didn't I? So Yennefer, um, Geralt's lover, is a bit of an eccentric sorceress. And she likes to have sex on, uh, on this taxidermic... Unicorn, because I can't imagine there being much more of uh, mo much more uh, taxidermic unicorns like that one. Black sashes. Ah, oh, there goes the voice again. Meeves Lyrians were traversing a wood when they heard a loud, drawn-out blast of a horn. One of our scouts, the queen asked, clearly perplexed. She turned in her saddle to face Reynard, who shook his head. Strange. Gascon, appoint a few of your strays, ones who know how to blend in. Have them sniff out who blows that horn and why. The scouts returned a short while later with their report. Soldiers had pitched camp in a nearby meadow. They wore Edernian uniforms, cut by sashes bearing a golden sun. They addressed their leader as Falbazon. Know the name, Rayla said. Falbazon went over the enemy first day of the war, took this whole division with him. Ah, oh, over to the enemy, so he's a deserter. Your grace, a chance like this won't come again. Let's teach the traitors, teach the traitors a lesson. So let's attack. We must send a strong signal one all the north will fear, will hear. From the Yaruga to the Dragon Mountains, announced the queen. Whoever collaborates with the invader shall pay with his head. Prepare to attack. Rayla nodded, clearly pleased. The Lyrian surrounded the meadow marked by their scouts. Moments later, a flaming arrow pierced the sky giving the signal to attack. Edernian traitors. Falbazon was not the sole traitor in the north. Many of the land's wealthiest allied with the empire, bribed by the promise of riches and privilege, and sometimes on the duress. They had struggled to discern whether the kings themselves were striking deals with the invaders. Hansel of Kedwin, Foltest of Temeria, and it did appear after all that the longer the war dragged on, the less resistance Nilfgaard seemed to encounter. Reduce the retreat timer to zero. Okay. Is that Queen Meave? Two arms! Falbazon. Interesting. So you even damage the units that are over there. So the retreat timer. Reduce this artifact timer by one for every unit played from the opponent's hand. When the timer reaches zero, Count Falbazon escapes and Meave wins the battle. We don't play much many units from our hand, but. Yeah, let's just play with the Grey Rider. Without hesitation. And get everything out of our system. What does this guy do? After two turns on turn start, increase Falbazon's retreat again? timer oh by God. one. Ah, we can reduce it like that. Okay. Um, I feel like this is pretty easy peasy. Because we can uh, again, again, use me use Meef to destroy them uh, immediately. And that reduces the timer to by four <laughs> by four turns already. Okay, fair enough. This is not going to take long. And there's another one just popping up. No. So those are actually getting Dang damaged by the fire as well. So no need to make it any harder than it already is. Does that actually stay immobile? It doesn't. Then I'm going to just pull a few units into the, the fire. Like this. Bigger they are, easier they are one, two, and three. Mercy, and there we go. We surrender. It's, it's already done. That was a pretty easy battle to start with. Falbazon is really a coward. But this man has suffered much. The traitors, perhaps used to fighting uns unsuspecting foes, stood no chance against... Perhaps used to fighting unsuspecting foes. Okay, stood no chance against the determined Lyrian attack. At its conclusion, Meave personally knocked Falbazon off his mount, then tore off his visor. Ah! Oh! The face she saw evoked more sympathy than hatred. Falbazon was an old sickly man, his skin pale and unblemished. With great difficulty he pulled himself up on his knees, then sh extended a shaky hand in pleading. Your grace, have mercy, 
The Nilfgaardians forced me to treason. They threatened torture. Neve felt her soldier's eyes on her. They awaited her decision. How would she treat this traitor? Would she really execute him as a warning to others? Um. Oh, Rayla is not going to like this again. We can hang him or we can show mercy. I feel like Isabel even warned us for this. And I think we should show mercy. I hereby dissolve you your div uh, dissolve your division, Falbazon, and you surrender your sword and be on your way. The traitor threw himself at the queen's feet. You've shown mercy, befitting a true, truly great ruler, your grace. A thousand thanks. To the west of here lie my lands. Visit me. I shall throw a sumptuous feast in your honor and provide a generous donation to your fight against our common foe. So yeah, that's my voice for Falbazon. Meave ordered Falbazon to stand. Her Lyrians reluctantly stepped out of the departing traitor's way. When he passed Black Rayla, she spat at his feet. So we lost morale again. Which was, of course, to be expected. Although, it could have gone either way. I felt like maybe the soldiers understood his viewpoint a bit. But uh, apparently not. So let's just raid this entire battlefield. And then we'll head towards his estate. Because we were promised goodies. And if I'm promised goodies, I need those goodies. Oh, why are those piles of wood always less than the gold stacks? Okay, Falbazon, hello. Meave and her Lyrians and we have audio back. Falbazon's lands, home of the traitor she had let live. He greeted the queen with full honors. In ceremonial garb, a platter of bread and salt held aloft. Your grace, tis an honor to welcome you to my humble abode. Please, come inside. A fattened piglet already turns on the spit. Soon I shall fetch my best wines from the cellar. I wasn't too far off, actually, and I feel like his face is not trustworthy. Eve, having lived on nothing but salt pork and gruel for weeks, was tempted to accept the offer. Black Rayla, however, was strongly against it. Ma'am, forgive my insolence, but to eat from a traitor's table is foolish. Don't do it. And I think I'm going to follow Rayla with this one, so we'll reject Falbazon's offer. Heeding Rayla's plea, the Queen declined Falbazon's invitation. Clearly saddened, he escorted the Queen to the bounds of his estate. I thank you once more, Your Grace, he said, bending to kiss her hand. And I swear from now on, I shall support the North as best I can. Meave nodded, then went on her way. She wondered whether the old man would keep his word, or, as soon as the Lyrians disappeared over the horizon, once again don an imperial crested sash. He might. He might just. It is a great pity your grace hasn't time to feast with us. Yeah, I feel like he's an evil man. From here on, I'll prove a steadfast enemy of the Black Clan As I said, I'm not actually wrong about this voice. That was actually funny. The great sun, I've covered myself in shame. Anything useful from you? No. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look around. So, we're almost done with this area, actually. So, I think there's one more village we need to check out. And then I'm going to send out my scouts to just round up all the remaining uh, resources. As a general rule, I'm actually going to swap out the commanders, the Lyrian Horn with the Morana runestone every time I'm at low morale, just so I can uh, counter my low morale uh, downsides. And, oh yeah. As Meave passed the city of Harmelin, one of the peasants she'd saved from Nilfgaardian captivity requested an audience. Be taking leave of you here, lady. Folk from our parts lives in Harmelin. We'll manage. But, milady, we, uh, we thank you for taking pity on us time and again. So those are the peasants we took with us a long time ago. And now we got actually something in return, a bone talisman. We've nothing, milady, or near's enough. Black-clad bastards took all's worth taking. Except in this amulet. Been in my family for ages, kept us from harm. May it do the same for you. Meave wanted to say she did not believe in peasant superstitions. But when she took the ivory pendant in hand, she felt a curious warmth from it. The peasant bowed, then joined the others as they trod off towards Harmelin. Interesting. I wonder if Isbel knows anything about that. 
Just quickly gonna check out the tent. The bone talisman and mysterious ability lies within. That's it. The simplest of objects sometimes possess the greatest power. You know what? That made me incredibly curious. Um, I'm gonna swap out the Merlot. Yeah, I'm gonna swap out the Merlot for the talisman. There we go. Don't know what it's gonna do. I'm just curious. There we go. And there we go. So, those are the same peasants we actually trotted along for a while. And there's a few things we can check out here. Your Majesty, the town is indeed deserted, but prisoners remain shackled in the dungeons beneath the courthouse. The Edernians must have forgotten them during their retreat. What should be done with them? We could use them to bolster our forces, though I have an inkling they may not prove the most disciplined of recruits. Every soldier counts, we take the mudders, we lose morale, but that's pretty much... Yeah, we're at the lowest already, so I don't think that matters. There we go. Six units added to our ranks, and this... I think we passed here already, right? I think we did. This pendant, your majesty. Wear it round your neck, always. It'll keep evil from you. Interesting. Pendant, It'll keep evil from you, but that's pretty much the only thing we actually know about. That sounds... that doesn't sound good. That is Aldersburg. Um, let's take a look. Illyrian stood within five miles of Aldersburg when the road, which until now they had traveled alone, suddenly filled with all manner of folk. Peasants, merchants, and wounded fighters in tattered uniforms. They trod solemnly in the opposite direction, their worldly possessions on their backs. Oldersburg's fallen, my lady. Sighed one of the refugees with a forlorn shrug. Outer walls breached. The king still defends the old town, but black clad goats are winning. You'd best turn back before it's too late. We've nowhere to turn to, good man, the queen said. Then spurred on her horse. Follow me! The queen galloped so fast the wind squeezed tears from her eyes. The Lyrian cavalry close at her heels. Hoofbeats thundered down the high road, and the crowd of refugees parted, making a path for the charging riders. Faster! Oh yeah. Faster. Nice music. Really set eye on Aldersburg. A red glow filled the horizon. The wind carried screams and the clanking of steel. The once Here we go. city was quickly turning to dust in the Nilfgaardian sun. The so, uh, force moved to Aldersburg the needs our help. Without slowing, Meave cut down the infantryman who tried to drag her from her saddle with a hook. Her head in a winged helmet fell to the ground, leaving a bloody track. Miriams, attack! Meave shouted. Take no prisoners! Take no prisoners! No, we shall not. Here we go. The fall of Aldersburg. Aldersburg outskirts. The invading forces ignored the Lyrians at first. After all, the Nilfgaardians were better equipped, better trained, and most importantly, held a considerable numerical advantage. However, their supremacy quickly began to vanish. Blackclad soldiers fell one after the other to the blows from Meave's infantry. The Nilfgaardian commander, watching in disbelief, trumpeted for reinforcements. So, story battle. It's a standard one, so we're in for the long haul. And I. Uh, yeah, we have the Morgana Runeson, so I'm gonna keep the Bone Talisman. I have no idea what's gonna happen with that. But, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give ourselves a bit of a good start. Bloody hell. And that should be you it. Shan't stop me. Not now. <laughs> okay, they start yeah, with those guys in play already. Um, so damage an enemy by the number of allied units. It's fair enough. I did remove Alzu's Thunder. If I wait one more turn, he boosts them again. And then I can use Meave to get the Sixers out there. So let's put a Regiment Drummond down. Left, right. And then the left, third. We do right. have low morale, so that's gonna hurt. Yes. There we have all of those with six damage. And our. Ooh, that's five. But, 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 but. We can use the Drummond to get the Sightman out. This is and then use the Hushduk to get another Sightman out. Or even the war wagon, even better. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf. And then fire. use Meave to just blast those footmen. There we go. And the turn. <laughs> so let's use the stray slinger first. Use him to move those two footmen away from there. And then the one Alba Parkman we have left here over there so we reduce the amount of uh, boosting he can do yeah. 
Because remember, we have this guy over here. So the Rivian Sapper. Which I can use to start damaging those guys. Uh, but first off, the... Stray's Bomber. Hmm. Might be a good one on this row. I there we go. Weak. And then the turn. No damage, sadly. Uh oh, we need to we need to work. We need to start working. What does the bone talisman do? Because if that backfires, I don't have anything else to play around with. But forager, use this. Take my two light infantrymen and take those guys out. And that's sadly it. And the fire is doing little. Okay, I think we got this first round. And he only has two cards extra, so let's just pass. There we go. Won the first round. We're gonna have uh, eight cards on the end there. The field medic would be handy to resurrect something. But I'm gonna wait. I can only replace one card, actually. I think it's high time I check out what we have with that bone talisman. So let's stop redrawing cards. And revive something with what the field medic. We have a forager that we can revive. Fair enough. Just take the whole finger. And the turn. <laughs> Summon a copy, which is fine. Then put the war wagon you over here. Win them all, but you won't. And wait one more turn. Yeah, one more turn. There we go. And then we can use Meave. To damage all of those by four. That's one. Then we can use the forager to get those two down. And that does that once. Then the Lyrian Hajduk took to reuse the forager. Left, right, left. And actually uh, use him to nine. get another light infantry unit down and one more guy down on the other side. I'm just gonna try and play this out if it works. I'm just gonna use the bone talisman next. I don't know what that's gonna do. Got sand or plenty in them. So bone talisman has my last move. I have no idea what this is gonna do. Oh, interesting. Summon a copy of this unit from your deck. So you steal. Is it now revealed what it does? Mysterious ability. It just swapped the unit. Discipline. That's what you folk lack. And I think I'm gonna hold off now. The rest of my hand is pretty useful. So yeah, I'm gonna pass. I have one more replacement as well, if I'm not wrong on that account. And everything he spawns get dam gets damaged anyway. Wise choice. And it's just equal, so if he passes now, he's down, so he lost his card advantage there. Which is perfect, oh, and he's really ah! hesitating what to do now. Yeah, there we go. So we lost that round, but that's exactly how we planned it. And I do love the music. It's really cool music. So the, the amount of damage has been doubled by now already. And there we have Egg, which is also handy. Ooh, we have pretty much the perfect hand right now. So let's remove the Sightman. And that's all of it. And we get our also Stunder back. Um, let's use... Also Stunder now. On... This guy. Because I don't want three of those on the battlefield right now. Then. The drummer. With the sightman. That's one. Then next up I need to use Rainet. Because otherwise I don't get my boosts back. So end the turn. Because I want Isbel on the field when I use the boosts as well. And another one of those. Great. So let's put Isbel down. It's not too late to walk away. And end the turn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh no. Yeah, there goes Isbel. Ah, fuck. Uh, that means we don't have any other reason to wait. He's gonna uh, be a right good yeah. Big Just and a beautiful. Sapper. Then use Rayla to get Rainered out. Those get all boosted. We must trust each other. 
Then this out. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Now we get the Voyager. Then Xavier onto Rela. Gaskell, maybe? No, the Forager, the Forager. The Forager right next to the other Forager. Oh, be ashamed to let this beauty go to waste. And then end the turn. You're gonna have to be careful not to use too many order, but holy fuck. I might actually lose this, yeah. So, 22. I'm gonna not use Rayla anymore, I think, because otherwise I might actually lose this. So that's an order ability. That goes around. And then we use the Marana Runestone. And we're on top. I'm not gonna do anything anymore. Because we're gonna lose if we do that. Although it's 8 points. What do I get out of this? No, I'm just gonna pass. I don't wanna risk losing this. <laughs> there we go. Your grace, that. All that was but their rear guard. Yeah, indeed. We're not done yet. This was just the outskirts of Aldisburg. The Lyrians managed to scatter the Nilfgaardian battalion, one of many besieging Aldersburg. Their scouts brought before the Queen a prisoner freed from the invaders. Neve inquired about the situation in the city. Turn the right slaughter out, it out. The Imperials, they. King had the city cleared, my lady, but didn't put himself. Holding out with his guard in old town, walls still standing there. Said he'd fight to the end. Come with me. Neve weighed her options. The situation looked dire. Demavend, to whom she had come for help, needed help himself. Nilfgaard enjoyed an overwhelming advantage. The small Lyrian detachment stood no chance of breaking the siege. To retreat. Surrender. That was not something Neve did. The North Guardians do not expect a relief force. Hmm. Rayla, you know Aldersburg. Can you lead us by side streets to the old town, that we may avoid the largest part of the North Guardian army? The warrior nodded, and without waiting for any further orders, strode out in front of the party. Reynard followed her with his gaze, clearly troubled. And... And what then, your majesty? We burst into the lion's den and... And we pray the lion chokes. Follow me! Okay, we pray the lion chokes. So we can get more stuff out of here, but I feel like we're pretty much... If we check out the map, we probably have one more route leading to Aldersburg. So... What else is there to do then? Crushed and breached. The lower town in flames. Thousands, thousands more fled. King Demavend will fight to the end. He'll save the city or die with it. Turn back. Turn back while you've the strength to run. While you have your life. Aldersburg falls. Aldersburg is lost. Okay, Aldersburg is lost. Okay, so there's something. We can actually talk to this gate. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's nothing, anything useful coming out of there. Now we have this. I feel like this is the point of no return. Do we get a prompt here? Yeah. So the section and we miss... We are still missing one more chest, which I know... Because that's the treasure map we got. So give me a second, I'm gonna clear up the map. Oh my god, I finally found it. It's back in the Mulderwood. So if you check out... So this is the map. And if you check out the bigger map, it's pretty much... Oh, the bigger map, that's not the map. It's near the south in the middle, uh, near this fast travel point. So if you check this out, right underneath one of the traps. And above one of the other golden chests is this one over here. And it's the last one we're actually missing. And I actually didn't miss a single... There we go, the Rayla avatar. We didn't miss a single resource package, so that means we... Have a go. So this might be a bit of a longer episode, but I don't want to wait. So let's head in. We are approaching an important moment in your journey. So uh, 11 quests, 8 hours, 8 puzzles, 7 standard battles won, and all the golden chests found. Here we go. Gods have mercy. And demons take it all. 
Another city in ruins with... Ooh, those are the, the fire scorpions that are firing. Anything else Meave wants to say? Taking no. advantage of the confusion, Meave maneuvered her troops to the very walls of the old town. Spying Lyrian banners, the defenders suspected a trap. But when they noticed Black Railer among them, they immediately lowered the drawbridge. The old town was a maze of brothels and shady taverns. In normal times, students and other pleasure seekers prowled its dark alleys. Now, tired soldiers slumped in every corner. Though the Lyrians' arrival clearly buoyed their spirits. The Fraternal Realm's warriors clasped each other's hands and swapped tales. Even Eden's King Demoven made no secret of his pleasure at seeing these unexpected arrivals. Ooh, the king himself! Me. Of all the besieged cities in all the world, you walk into mine. Come to the rescue, have you? To be quite frank, I've come to be rescued. Oh, yes. I've heard much of the events in Lyria. Disgraceful! Such betrayal! However, as you might have noticed, things are none too rosy here, either. Yes. That is hard to miss. I thought we'd trade blows with the Blacklads. That it would be an even match. Two weeks. That sufficed to annihilate the army I'd spent my whole lifetime building. Your Majesty, I cannot say what fate will bring, if we shall reach this war's end alive. But I wish to say now that I admire you. Oh? You evacuated the city, yet refused to evacuate yourself. You fight to the bitter end, like a hero. But of course, the king must lead by example after all. Especially in war. Reynard. That rumbling, you hear it? Studied boots on cobblestones. The Nilf Guardians. Prepare the men for battle. Yes, Your Grace. So, now that we're alone, what's really going on? What? Did you not hear? I'm defending my capital. Like a hero. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking something like that, that he wouldn't. He's probably protecting something else. Ah, uh, like someone with a death wish, you mean? Don't feed me that rubbish. Like a man bent on suicide, rather. Demovend, I hate to retreat as much as the next ruler, but sometimes you must pull back to strike another day. Uh, if we must be fully honest, there is another reason I've not left the city. Of course there is. See that building? That one there? The brothel? The crimson bodice? Precisely. So, I promise not to laugh. I'm a patron. A loyal one, in fact. One of the girls there, Demaretta. Um, she's marvelous. Makes me feel young again. Seriously? That's the reason. Fool, you mean. Demoven, there's a war on, and... Allow me to finish. Demaretta became, well, with child. Exactly nine months ago. Understand Demaretta me? and Demoven. She's entered confinement. Having contractions? Since yesterday. You see, I cannot leave her like this. Can't have her moved. I must stay put until she gives birth. And then what? Pray tell. Invite all of Nilfgaard to the christening? No, my dear. There is a hidden tunnel deep beneath the city, leading far beyond its walls. Once the midwives cut the cord, we flee. Wait. Only with the child, I presume. For a bastard, you risk an entire army. This is folly indeed. I understand children are life's greatest treasure. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the first one. He's out of his mind. Demovend, you risk the lives of thousands of men for a single child. For a bastard to boot. Meave, I would kill thousands of men for my child. Born in wedlock or out, it changes nothing. It changes everything. One way the babe inherits the throne, the other... Ah, oh, you argue succession while I speak of a father's love. But I shouldn't expect you to understand. Your heart, ice through and through, always has been. No wonder, villain. Oh, you should be careful with that tongue of Your yours. Majesties. The Nilf Guardians are attacking. Meave, we must hold out. A few hours, that's all. That's I'll do all. What I can. There we go. Let's make some Nilfgaard soup. The defense of the old town, midwives advise that women in the throes of childbirth be surrounded with a sense of calm and security. 
The Moretta was afforded no such luxury. As she opened her eyes between contractions, she witnessed the flaming missiles of the Nilfgaardian war machine streak across the sky and lifeless soldiers slide from the fort's walls. Faster, she whispered to her forthcoming infant son. Faster, my angel. Optional, eliminate enough Nausicaa brigades to give Damavent time to escape. Well, we want him to escape. We get extra cards. Defend the king! We must stop them! So... Okay, so we have the castle gate. Every turn on turn start, boost a random ally by two and give it two armor, so it's the same as always. Then King Damavent III, counter 15, reduce the counter by one for each Nausicaa Brigade destroyed. When the counter reaches zero, Meave wins the battle. And if he dies, we lose the battle. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the Nausicaa Brigade, move one row towards the opponent and dual random up a unit on its current side. And then the Fire Scorpions. After four turns, on turn start, destroy the castle gate. No, 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 can we take that out? I don't think I have enough to take that out. What does this do? Destroy and damage an enemy by two if it was destroyed spawn fire. I can probably take that. Oh, that does random stuff. Okay, um, interesting. Let's just damage the fire scorpion then. And then the turn. So he gets I armored by the you. gate again. Those are there, okay. So as long as the gate is there, I'm actually getting boosted. But I want to get rid of those other guys as well, of course. So let's use the Rivian Sapper first. Although what? You know what? No, the sling is first. So I can reduce the number that are actually here. One, two, and three. So that goes down by one for each Nozga Brigade destroyed. Okay, okay, okay. Two more Nozga Brigades. So yeah, this guy just... Uh, is that Mano Kuhorn? Yeah. That recognized that fancy moustache of his. Okay, so next time my gate is gonna be destroyed. So let's use our first Rivian Sapper. And ooh, is that a Foltus Sprite? That's normally the the image for Foltus Sprite, but catapult damage an enemy by four and its adjacent units by two. Okay, Rivian Sapper first. Gonna need um, three more. One, took full of pain. Two, three, and. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Four. That boosts it to eleven, and me. there goes the gate. They're getting close. Devils take all. Help me. Oh yeah, and of course the gate works in that account as well. And he makes two more Nozga brigades. Okay, those go down. Oh, I need to be careful. Um, so let's use Alzu Thunder next. Like this, that destroys another brigade. And then I really need to start using my drummers because I'm losing control here. And he passes. Wait, this is a normal battle. We must hold on a bit longer. That means I should probably use the Rivian Sapper. Don't you worry yourself, your grace. We'll get a done in no One, time. two, and three, and four. Reducing the countdown to a whole lot. And that's up to five. And then I need to put something down that can actually help me out here, because... So let's use the Regiment I'm Drummond. Was a waste of time for one like me. Wow. Because his hand is completely empty now, so let's give him another Not charge. Already, are we? 
And then get two sidemen out of there. Two? Yeah, two. There we go. And then just use me to get rid of... Those guys have resilience, so might as well just put damage on those guys. There we go. And then the turn. And pass. I think that's pretty much what we're gonna get. Maybe get rid of the Murano runestone for something more useful. Yeah, okay, the Grey Rider. Normally I would say Grey Rider first, but in this case, more wagon. You can try to win them all. You and the turn. Then use a forager to get I only loot corpses. those two guys down. Quite fresh. And we got one Nolska Brigade dude down. I think I'm gonna play out this round. Because he's gonna place enough Nolska Brigades for me to. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, okay. Let's put Black Rail on next to him. I'll fight to my last breath. That's gonna be my next move. Because we're gonna get four more damage on there. Yeah, he's focusing on, on them event. He's going down. That's one. That's two. So first up... We got... Uh, Xavier... Over here. And you know what? I think I can actually finish this, right? If I do this... We've won. There we go. <laughs> it worked. Now retreat to the tunnel. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So it does end the match. It's not over yet. So this might be a very long episode. Their forces combined. The rulers managed to hold the old town long enough for Demoretta to bear the king's offspring, a healthy, hardy boy. When the midwife slapped the infant, his scream carried above the roar of battle. Soon afterwards, the defenders abandoned the walls and left the city through a secret tunnel. The Nilfgaardians, furious that not one but two northern sovereigns were among the escapees, raised Aldersburg to the ground. Sadly, but we did get a bit of triumphant music. Thank you. If not for you, the devils would have devoured us. I should say it was nothing. But the truth is, I need your aid. Aid? But you see, my army is no more. I must pull back, regroup. Pull back? Where to? The golden sun flies over your entire realm. To Redania, to take shelter at the court there. And then? Will you sit and watch the fool juggle apples as Nilfgaard parcels all Eden out to its settlers? Meave, one must know when to fold and when to double down. Nilfgaard has stretched the front. Winter will soon be here. Let the costs claw away at them. A year, two, then we strike. And we shall prove the Empire is a colossus with feet of clay. Hmm. You are a coward and do or do as you see fit. Well, do as you see fit, I suppose. He's a king. Do as you see fit. And you? I can't live like that. So what shall you do instead? Fight on. Until I win. Or the black-clad curs tear me apart. Gods, such pity I have for your husband. The poor man must have had a rough go of it. <laughs> he seemed content with his life while it lasted. Yet I'm serious, Demavend, in my request. You truly won't aid me. Provide nothing at all. A royal decree and ten troops. I will tell my men whoever so wishes can join your party and fight on. But please, curb your excitement. They are tired. Few will choose the path of greater resistance. But, but, but... Are you familiar with the saying, When at wit's end, a dwarf's your friend? Yes, it and many others. Yet as much as I appreciate folk wisdom, I prefer facts to philosophy at the moment. Preferably facts relevant to my situation. How about this? Mahakam is but a week's ride from here, and there you'll find thousands of dwarves armed to the teeth. 
Ah. Let's turn the tides of this war, I venture. Finally, I've been wondering if Mahakam would be in this game. Yes, they could. If not for another fact. That the dwarves have always been famously indifferent to strife between humans. They'll never come to my aid. Bah! I doubt they'll even let me into their land. Unless you show them this. The leaden ring. A token of amity given to me by the Elder-in-Chief. That's not to say they'll welcome you with open arms. But they will hear you out. And that is something. Hmm. Dwarven infantry I'd make good use of. I shall do as you say. Or at least try. Good. And to ease your journey somewhat, I'll give you as your guide the best man, or rather woman, for the task. Oh, yes. Rayla. Oh, yes, we got to keep yes, Rayla. Your grace. Ooh, I was wondering about that. You've been to Mahakam with me many times. You know their paths. Take Queen Meave and her party there. If it be your wish, my king, I shall obey. She doesn't really like dwarves, I'll send though. messages ahead that the dwarves may expect She looks own. angry. Until then, good luck, Meave. And may we one day waltz upon the grave of our foe, Emperor Emir. <laughs> may it be so. Just as long as I get to lead. Ah, of course. Farewell, Queen. Farewell, Demovent. And that means left we get a new chapter. Spirits. Rather than provide the help she had hoped for, Demovent had merely sent her on to Mahakam. Her way west was lit first by the glow of a burning city, then by the smoldering remains of charred villages by the roadside. It was clear the war against Nilfgaard had taken a bitter turn. Each stranger was now treated as an enemy, and the customarily hospitable Adernians slammed their doors at anyone's approach. The party's morale was somber as well, and did not even improve with the first sight of mountains looming in the distance. Wandering among the ashes, Meave entered the dwarves' domain. Mahakam. There we go. Among the ashes. Oh, look at that. Nick is in the loading screen. Yeah, I, I'm a bit sad that I needed to leave him behind. Well, not leave him behind, but not put him in the deck. I like Nickus. He's a lovely dog. But Along now... perilously steep paths, Black Rayler led the Queen and company towards Mahaka, the dwarven homeland. There, among snow-capped peaks, someone awaited. Rayla, you brought strangers. Ah, Gabor Zigrin. Gabor. I present to you Maeve, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. Ah, a queen! Crivens! Well then! We... A large shadow swept across the sky. Oh! The dwarf swallowed the rest of his greeting as all raised their gazes to see a dragon soar swiftly toward Mount Carbon. Keltilus, do not be afraid, he is near threat to Aha. us. Aha! Keltilus! The dwarf had broken Keltulus. the silence gently. He himself quite familiar with this altogether unusual sight. Another grand cart. Sit yourselves down before the pottage grows cold. I oh, but flu. Dragon. Yes, dragon. Stone shriveling marvel in it. Makes you almost sad. The lizards are dying out. Should you not worry more about the fate of your brethren? That creature will soon have all Mahakam aflame. Ha! Keltilus? No! He's lived here centuries! Harmless for the most part! Now, your grace. A taste? No, none. Though your offer of repast I value, good sir. Oh! Oh, no need of that! Gabor, please. Enchanted to make your acquaintance. So Gabor Zigrin, or Gabor Zigrin, is the cousin, I think, from Yarpen Zigrin, a character from the books. Um, although I don't think Gabor actually makes a, an appearance in the books. But since he shares the same last name with Yarp and Zygrin, he must be related Gabor somehow. Gabor is a true local notable from one of Mahakam's leading clans, the Zygrins. But then he wouldn't be our guide if he wasn't. A guide for all important guests. A pleasure. And as I said, I thank you for your hospitality, but I've no time to feast now. I must speak to your ruler at once. Hmm. Don't I mean no offence, but Elder in Chief Bruverhoog's 
a recluse of sorts, as humans go. Didn't even meet the ones that wear crowns. But I suppose I could, meaning if you drafted a letter... Her Majesty's got Demoven's signet, given willingly. Ah. Well, that's a sheep of a different sort. We didn't let many human folk into Mahakam, and for good reason. So those who we let come through the second gate get blindfolded. Just after they've surrendered their arms at the first. But you've the leaden ring. Given one of your kind to confirm trust and amity. So, we're certain we can treat you as one of our own. Elder and chiefs in the pass visiting. Look into his flock. Come on. No reason you two shouldn't you jabber right quick. Though the Lyrian infantry rose half an ell taller than the dwarf, he moved with remarkable ease through the waist-high snow, while those behind him slipped and stumbled on the ice-slick rocks. Neve and Rayla trailed the party, so they might speak in private. Oh, there we go, and we acquire another card, Gabor Ziggyan himself. Rayla, I'm grateful the ring how did it wind up in Damovin's hands. You disliked non-humans, I thought. Yeah, let's start with, although that's yellow, that probably means that moves on. Non-humans you despised immensely, I believed. They don't bother me a bit. Long as they stay in their lands, seek fortune nowhere else. I detest only those who infest our cities, humbly insist on belonging to our guilds, holding office in our institutions, armies. Yet some find a place for themselves. Blending marvellously. It's never lasting. They're different. Odd. Strain's inevitable. And then they'll always stab a human in the back. Okay, then. The ring. However did Demovend come to possess it? Elder in chief himself gave it to him. Years ago. A decade. Perhaps more. Why? Oh, you must have heard the tale, Your Grace. You see, formerly, Faltus of Temeria's sovereign of Mahakam... He believed it was his right to tax any Leand lands, so he sent collectors. Well, the dwarves felt stripped, so they stripped the collectors down to their natural state. Put them in beer barrels, they then rolled down the mountainside. Ah, oh, my. That incited Faltus ire, I'm sure. Indeed, Ember Hot Ire. A punitive expedition was assembled immediately. We're about to set off when Demoven managed to dissuade Faltus. Elder in Chief gave him the ring in thanks. I see it all now. Prevented Mahakam's slaughter, Demoven did. Your Majesty. Demoven prevented a slaughter, true. But Faltists in the Temerians, not the Dwarves. Mahakam and fortifications. Well, you'll soon see. No human will take them. Ever. Yeah, indeed. In all of Witcher lore, there's not a single mention of Mahakam even being threatened, ever. The Elder's gratitude, then? Not certain I know where it came from. Had the Dwarves crushed the Temerians? No, when they had done so, what would have happened? Why, retaliation against all non-humans in Temeria. Bruva knew this, so in fact, Demoven saved them. Exceptionally provident, the Elder-in-Chief. And shrewd as a swarm of snakes. So when you speak, beware his hiss and weigh your every word. Rayla, your aid proved an unexpected bounty. I received orders. I fulfill them to their end. My, I see. And what will you do now? Our paths diverge, not more. I return home now, when new orders surely await. Demovend oh, has no. fled to the Redanian court, where he shall cower and not show his mug until spring has sprung. You know this. Would you not prefer to remain in my ranks? Fight the Black Ones bound at the hip? Ah, oh, she's not going to want to. I pissed her off too much. No, Your Grace. There we go. Fuck. You dislike you have me. No love for me, do you? We are not of the same stock, Your Grace, so it's hardly my place to. <laughs> stock and place be ploughed. We must speak from our hearts. Two women. No enmity. Tell me why. I did something, something you could not abide. It was what you did not do, rather. In Edurn, you were far too lenient on those elves. As you are ever prepared to forgive, extend clemency. What would you have me do? Let you cleanse, rid the wood of all non-humans. Wickedness demands wickedness. Blood calls for blood. Very well, Rayla. Then go and drink of it if you must. Goodbye, Rayla. Lips pursed, eyes locked, Meave and Rayla took each other's measure a last time. 
the warrior then bowed in a manner some might think excessively courtly, turned on her heel and rode off down a slope. Meave gazed after her until she disappeared behind a snowbank, then gave her mount a solid dose of her heels and rode on, irked as a hare in a briar patch. There goes our one of our most powerful cards. Swah. That is Grace, sad, but I have a message for your eyes uh -huh. only. The Grey Rider. Okay, we'll check that out next time because this episode has been going on for far too long. So thank you guys enormously for watching. When we get back, we'll uh, take our first steps on the snowy hills uh, towards Mahakam. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.